hi guys welcome back to the channel I am busy this morning trying to get this cassava that we harvested uh, but you guys would know that I have harvest I planted cassava about 10 months ago and uh, this cassava that I'm peeling is that cassava mm. trying to get it all processed because cassava spoils rather quickly 24 hours and it turns black so trying to get it all peeled up and into the freezer so that it will freeze and store in its prime so the weather is quickly changing well it has changed and the rain is about to it's about to come down the mountains so all of that the rain is about but it's here so i need to get this cassava out of the rain get my camera out of the rain and uh finish up this job i'll pick you guys back up when i'm finished Thunder clapping. <laughs> so you're probably wondering what I'm trying to avoid. Um, I'm trying to process this cassava quickly. Well, basically, when the cassava is out of the ground, it starts to oxidize, and uh, the flavor profile of the cassava is, is affected tremendously. And one of the signs to show that the cassava is doing that, I'll show you now. Try to get this cassava skin off. One of the signs the cassava gives you is that the veins in the cassava, let me wash this off. Hope the camera can pick it up. So the veins in the cassava, you seeing those veins in the cassava? I'm not sure if the camera is picking up, but the veins on the cassava, all those veins, they start to go green, bluish, blackish kind of color. When that starts to happen, the flavor profile, the flavor profile of the cassava is affected. So we don't want that. <laughs> I like to have my cassava in soups I just love it boiled and uh, with butter and some green onions love that I also like corn cassava stores really well in the freezer get a whole year of having it in the freezer without dealing with freezer burn so if you're going to plant cassava you can always um, plan to have to keep freezer space for that cassava so that when you do harvest it because it's such a long crop um, you can keep freezer space just for that cassava to last you, you and your family for the entire year a thought that just occurred to me was sometimes we try growing potatoes here in the tropics and we try and we try and we try to grow something that just does will not grow because i mean potato does not like the hot weather that we have but we could grow cassava and you know those in the colder countries they may be able to grow potatoes but they definitely can't grow cassava and I'm saying to myself, you know, it's just all boils down to appreciation, appreciating the things that you can do instead of looking at other people and what they grow and trying to do it, knowing fully well that it's going to be difficult. So now it doesn't make any sense. We may not be able to grow potatoes, so we buy it. Uh, but we may be able to grow cassava, so we plant that. And vice versa for those who live in the colder countries, they will be able to grow potatoes, but they will definitely have to buy cassava. At the end of the day, they're all calories and um, gardening does not have to be stressful. Once you appreciate, appreciate what you can grow, 
and you stay within that lane I don't think there's much that could really get you down or sad in gardening so it's all about finding what grows well in your area and sticking to it talk to others who live close to you who may have more experience ask them what does well and what does not so right now I'm trying my hardest hold on the truck's passing so as I was saying I'm trying my hardest to get uh, some squashes grown I grew um, I planted some seeds in with the okra and I've been having some difficulties I did do a short clip on that I'm gonna add that in now today is an exciting day I have a lot of things to do a lot of things that I want to accomplish I should say first of all I have some new seeds that I want to start I have uh, this butternut squash that I want to start um, again because where I tried planting it before the seeds germinated as I showed you but it didn't pass the first true leaf and it just was stunted even though I was watering it, it was re receiving this the water from the sky nothing was happening so vehicles passing so my plan is to try growing this butternut squash it is if you can see here it is tailored for the Caribbean it is a ultra HPF1 squash it says there's an extra long butternut squash it's sweet grows well in the tropics and is harvestable in 75 to 85 days so I'm going to try it again but in a different location in a container that I have in the back because that one loan by the squash that I got grew away from the okra now I planted my seeds by the okra trees I'm not too sure if it's something to do with the companion planting that you know okra and squash doesn't go well together I don't know if that's a thing but I'm going to try growing the squash by itself well technically it's going to be with some marigolds and some shadow benny in a container i'm going to amend that container with some rabbit manure i'm going to improve the drainage of that soil with some uh, perlite that i have upstairs and i'm also going to put some limestone some lime dust inside the container in case the ph is a bit high Okay guys, so I accomplished that. Apparently my camera ran out of space <laughs> and uh, it didn't capture when I put the seeds in the ground, but I did, I did plant them. And uh, it's now to wait to see when they germinate. Yeah, so I got this squash plant, the squash seeds planted. And uh, now it's just for me to wait, be patient, see how that goes. And I really do hope that it works out because I really do want to have squashes and pumpkins in storage this year. I have an example of that oxidation because I'm really running out of time. Can you see those black lines in the cassava? Yeah, so that's the oxidation I'm talking about. That's the cassava starting to break down. And uh, what we do, we try to <laughs> slice it off as much as possible. Uh, with a good bit of the cassava, but so my time is running down. I have a few, a good bit left. So I'm going to keep peeling. <laughs> 
hoping that it finishes soon because my hands are getting sore you can see my fingers they're red almost purple <laughs> but I'm almost there I'm almost finished so what I'm gonna add here is a clip of me talking about my tomato plant yesterday um, I've been having a problem with the tomato flowers dropping off and uh, I'm gonna share with you guys here what I think I need to improve on I've been having a big problem with this tomato and that problem is the flowers seem to be falling off the plant and I didn't know what was happening I knew that I was fertilizing it well it had the rabbit manure it had eggshells it had all sorts of amendments in the soil but yet those flowers were going on were dropping off the plant so it was either pollination was an issue or um, it was stressed by the, the heat because the humidity was a lot so just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about as regards um, the flowers dropping off you see on this truss right here look at that one two three four five six seven of the flowers on this truss has fallen off and I have one lone flower that's germinated and this one here so I'm just gonna stay here guys and finish up this little tour there's so many other plants that I want to show you I'm excited about it as uh, a uh, plant that you guys know I've been trying to grow for some time now and that's the Christophine but before I get there let me stick with the tomato I was telling you about the tomato so the tomato tree um, it was dropping those flowers and um, so I was trying to figure it out because I know there's lots of bees here I really don't particularly see the bees on the tomato I more see it on the herb tree over the chicken coop they love that plant I don't really see them much on the other plants I will see them on the Mexican sunflower but not very very much other plants so I'm thinking that I may need to trim that plant and I'll uh, try to get them to go to the other flowers <laughs> in the yard so pollination could be an issue with the tomato or I'm just not watering it enough now container growing is challenging because you know when the rain is falling you think that vehicle is passing guys sorry about the background noise when the rain is falling you think that your plants are being watered and the containers will be saturated I'm here to tell you that that is a myth when the rain is falling and you're seeing someone outside giving their plants water it means that the pot has no moisture in it to sustain that plant so I've learned that um, even though it's raining I really need to find a way to catch that rainwater and uh, use that rainwater that I've catched and water those those pots properly because it's not like the earth where you know that water is free falling into the earth and the roots of the plants in the earth could tap into that water those in the pots are restricted they're surrounded by plastic or clay or whatever your pots made up of so you mean you will need to despite it being overcast and raining you will still need to water your pots for that day in the tropics so if it's raining you still need to get out there and water your plants or they're going to die so i can say with surety that i need to up my uh, watering of my tomato tree because i was really concerned about over watering it that you know i might invite fungal issues into the tomato to the mat to the, to the tomato tree but i'm realizing that my lack of watering is really stressing the plant out and i just need to you know despite it being rainy give that that drum some water and allow the plant to flourish a little better so i think it's a combination of pollination and stress so that's that i also have some um, eggplant trees that the flowers have been dropping i'm not seeing any fertilized no eggplant um taking place and i'm right now experimenting using the electric toothbrush on my eggplant flowers because i watch a guy on youtube and he did that and he said it worked so i'm going to experiment here with an electric toothbrush on my eggplant flowers to see if it helps out 
because here in Trinidad, I don't know if in the other Caribbean countries, the eggplant seems to be having an issue with the flowers just dropping off of the plant. So I'm going to try it out with an electric toothbrush. If an electric toothbrush works for the eggplant, I will surely let you guys know so that if you have an eggplant tree, you can try it out for yourself at home. So with that said, I mentioned before the Christophine plant and that I want to show you guys that, um, but I'll do that in another video and I'll show you guys my progress with it because I'm super excited about it. And, uh, I, <laughs> you know, is 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 I just don't want anything to come and kill my plant. And so I'm going to show you guys in the next video about that Christophine plant and uh, how it's going and uh, what I did differently. Yeah, so hold tight for that, guys. I'll let you guys know all about that in the next video. But we're having some rain coming down the mountains again. So this is where I'm going to say bye to you guys. Oh, and sorry about the background noise. That's the air conditioning unit. It is very hot, very humid. So just keeping the babies inside nice and cool. So that humming, if it's it's if it's being heard throughout the video, I apologize. That's the air conditioning unit. Also, before I go, let me know what are some of your favorite ways to eat cassava, also known as yuca. <laughs> let me know in the comment section down below what you like to do with your cassava. Hope you were encouraged to get some sticks some cassava sticks if you're in the tropics put that in the ground and wait those nine to twelve months to reap your nice harvest that you could put up for the year and if you were in the temperate climates you plant your potatoes and you store them and you <laughs> eat them as you see fit until the next time guys keep growing and what i wanted to say yeah keep growing <laughs> Bye.